you speak on uh, intention versus expectation? Like, I understand the difference is expectation comes with a lot of attachment and it's desire-filled, um, whereas intention is, like, manifesting. But I find it really difficult to set intentions and not become... Atta- like, to not have them turn into expectations. Yes. You know, and I think my problem is always just this this continuous, like, battle where I, I can see logically the difference like I really understand the difference between intention and expectation but I find it so hard to put into practice to not let my intention become an expectation or to not be disappointed if my intention is not um, fulfilled in the timeline that I want it to be fulfilled Um, when you send out an intention and you expect its fulfillment the very act of sending out an intention is an act of ego. Creating an intention means you desire something. So it's quite a huge fashion now, especially in the United States, I see that a lot, that lots and lots of spiritual masters, teachers, spiritual systems even, speak about setting intentions. And it's taken for granted to be the thing to do because it is a society which relies on fulfilling desires for its own perpetuation. But every single time you set an intention, you are actually giving in to ego which is why you have the confusion. Because the moment you are a sensitive being who is able to actually distinguish between the ego at play and that something else, you know immediately that something is strange about setting an intention and the expectation that comes with the intention because if you set an intention, you will always have an expectation else you cannot even formulate that intention. It is that widespread in almost all spiritual systems, tarot readers, pendulum readers, mystics, almost everyone is talking about setting intentions. And the moment you set an intention, it's ego at play. So then, if you don't set intentions, what else are you supposed to do? Because somehow you do have a life that is unfolding in every moment and you want to enhance that life. You want to bring it to its highest potential. You want to succeed. So, if I were to put it in a very crude way, I would say that if you were to take two people and say to one to set an intention for something to happen and tell the other one, to check with their source what they're supposed to do. And if both people went on doing this for a period of a year, at the end of that year, the one who would have more of everything, money, joy, prosperity, interpersonal relationships, recognition, whatever it is, would be the one who's going with the truth, learning how to tune into the truth and going with that impulse versus the other one who has set all these intentions but has not received almost anything of what was intended to be received. This is a huge, huge aberration in spirituality and I know that by even even speaking about it is almost without much, let's say, success. But in 50 years, maybe 100 years, people will wake up to what I'm saying today. The moment you set an intention, you are giving in to ego and you will, per force, create suffering out of that. Now, if you were to say that this system, let's say, longs to meet that person, say the the twin soul or, or the the beloved. And then, but, instead of setting an intention which says, I want to meet my 
complementary soul. Tunes inward to the source and simply asks, is this the moment for that being to appear? Is this the thing for me to do so that that being appears? And gets into a dialogue with the soul itself. Whatever has to happen to increase the joy in this person's life will happen, whether it is money or relationships, recognition, whatsoever. And that is actually the, the huge mistake that is going on in spirituality, in the West especially. And it's that widespread that, I mean, one person like me saying something, but it may start off a paradigm shift, actually. Because it's not just a shift, it's a paradigm shift. It is no more about setting intentions. That is something which comes from falsehood. It comes from the ego wanting to perpetuate itself, to grow itself and to feed itself. And it only results in suffering. Apart from the fact that most people who set intentions don't succeed in, in actually realizing those intentions or achieving them. Would that include like, um, like speaking things into existence? Like that's also a big thing. You know, it's like say it as though it's already happened, you know, envision it happening. Would that be also then feeding the ego? If the action arises from the truth, it will feed joy. It will result in joy. Even if that thing doesn't happen, it will result in joy. But if that action comes from the truth, which means that if you want to speak out an intention, you first have to be quiet and ask, is it the right intention to speak out? Because how do you know? You know, you can ask for something, but when you get it, you will have to know how to deal with it as well. Let's say a person asks for a million dollars. They stick a million uh, uh, paper on the top of the ceiling and, and they actually get that million dollars. It could cause them more harm than, than joy if they don't know what to do with it. What if they use it to buy drugs? You know what I mean? It's not that simple. Setting an intention is a very, very, very delicate process and it can only be guided by the truth. If the truth tells you to set that intention, that's different. So the first step is to learn to distinguish between these two things. You know, if you want to be in charge of your life and actually create this life which is, which is joy and which is being an instrument of the truth, then you have to know the truth. You have to be able to tune into it. You have to learn how to do that. And you have to do it also. So this is part of that, that fallacy, that falsehood at play, which says set an intention, speak it out. And when you set intentions, often they also come to fruition. So if the intention which is set is not the right thing for this system, how is it going to bring joy and prosperity to this system? I say to this. Very, very, very important. And it has been in the last 15 to 20 years a fad, a madness actually, of setting intentions and speaking things into reality and, you know, when actually the way to attract joy into this life is to just be with the source, to be with the soul, that's the goal, you know, to surrender to that love which is the soul. That's why we have surrender to love because that's the fundamental kriya or Exercise is to be in surrender to your truth, to your soul. You're looking at me like... I have a lot to think about. It's just... Yeah. Setting intentions is an act of the ego unless there is express permission from the soul for that act. And because it's an act of the ego, it will bring suffering. It's just wild to actually 
imagine something like that, but it is like that. And you can experiment with it. One doesn't have to believe what I'm saying. You can experiment with it. Take two people, tell one to set intentions, tell the other one to listen to the truth, see what happens to them after a year. Without an exception, in every single case, the one that is going with the truth will be joyous and prosperous and the other one will not. Without a single exception. If one does an experiment, one will see. Whenever I've said this to anyone, in whatever satsangs, wherever in the world, I feel that this somehow resonates with a human being. Per se, being a human being, it resonates that it's not about setting intentions, but it's about being in the truth of their existence, tuning into that truth, living that truth. Even if it is somebody who will go out of the door and set the intention, when it's being listened to, it resonates as the truth. I've never seen a face that is against what I'm saying in all the satsangs I've done where I've said this one thing. Especially in the light of the fads that came out of the book, The Secret, and all those spiritual masters who actually believe that the universe is here to, to feed our egos and the intentions we set with the ego. It's not here to do that. It's here to support a joyous existence for us. And joy does not come in fulfilling desires. It comes in being an instrument of the truth.